Whoa! All right, welcome to another nerdy episode. And this time we're gonna investigate the effect of dirt and even chalk on the life of our climbing ropes. And is washing the climbing rope a good idea or maybe bad? Hmm? So sometimes we are in a crack like this, where no matter how much you try to take care of your rope, it's still gonna get really dusty. So that's why I'm collecting dust. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. I have some gifts for you. Gifts? Straight from the crag. Is it already Christmas? Are we there yet? Oh, geez. It's not you weren't shit. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So it's, it's multiple bags of dirt. No, it's uh, secured. Secured. Well, let me see. Nice, what? with some hair and some leaves, we've got it all. I want to know what's in there. <laughs> I got a bag of dirt, I got a bag of dirt. <laughs> you got a bag of dirt. <laughs> all right, for the first experiment, we wanted to see what effect this dirt will do to a brand new classic rope. And this is some fancy machine, which can imitate abrasion in very repeatable way by dragging the rope over a sharp edge yeah so sharp is very relative in this case i mean you can touch it can if I you touch like it? yeah i mean if you do like this you're not gonna rip ah, open no, your head not that sharp okay so the edge is the most dull knife you can imagine in your life like super super dull knife which cannot cut um, anything so this is not part of the standard tests. It's something which we develop is to be able to, you know, test the abrasion, how abrasion resistant the ropes are when we develop them. Nice. So this machine pulls the rope back and forth, back and forth over an edge, while at the same time maintaining a constant 80 kilograms load. It's basically imitating a climber being lowered over an edge again and again and again. And for the reference, if we would keep this rope clean, it would survive about 200 cycles of this test. But clean is not what we are doing today. Can you say it again? Yeah, they leave the dirty job for me. You have to get your hands dirty. <laughs> I'm getting my hands dirty, literally. Making the rope dirty. Okay, so we applied dirt on a segment and that looks like the rope fell in the sand and was dragged around. I just brushed my dirty hand. So we marked the middle and applied the dirt to half of the rope while leaving the rest clean. Okay, so it makes five cycles going back and forth. Mm -hmm. and then one minute of pause. We have this one minute so the rope can cool down because you create heat running it over the edge. So, uh -huh. yeah. We need so to we don't want the to melt out. the rope. Exactly. <laughs> so this is gonna take a long time. What games do you do while you wait? <laughs> Emails. Yes. Emails. <laughs> and that's how we work. <laughs> So yeah, science can be sometimes a lot of waiting. Luckily, we didn't need it to wait long. Only 50 cycles later, and we got this. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, like, I know. This I know. is insane. So this is without dirt after 50 cycles. And where we apply the dirt, it's quite fluffy already. And since in real life your rope will get in contact with the dirt many times, we decided to apply more dirt. Wow, well, now it uh, attracts dirt way more. Yeah, since the surface is so fluffy, it's more likely to retain the dirt. And the rope really didn't like that. Wow, that one was <laughs> crazy. Whoa. Yeah, I calibrated it in you. Hallelujah. Okay, 
it's Whoa. not looking good. <laughs> Whoa. Only a couple of cycles later and we could already see the core of the rope. No, but it's cool. It's very impressive to see uh, the differences. And if we ignore that broken part, here is the comparison between clean and the dirty parts. So, the first observation. The more fluffy the rope is, the easier the dirt gets in the rope. And the more dirt there is in the rope, the easier it gets fluffy. We have an exponential problem. Cool. No, very nice. And also the streaking is very informative because I wouldn't have considered this to happen. And we got an accidental discovery. You know how sometimes you get a black streak running across entire rope and then nobody actually knows what that is. Maybe it's dirt, maybe it's aluminum from quick draws, maybe it's dry treatment. So we actually managed to reproduce that on our sample. So we this basically discovered what is this black streak that people discover on their climbing ropes. Yes, it's the dirt for sure. You have the sharp edge, it's squeezed over the sharp edge. You have the dirt in the middle, it travels out to the sides and that's why you have black marks on the side. All right, a quick cleanup and a new experiment. This time we are testing a dry treated rope. Now, in case you don't know what's a dry rope, it means that the rope was soaked in certain chemicals and those chemicals closes the rope so that the water cannot get inside. But also the dirt cannot get inside the rope as easily. And also the rope becomes a little bit more smooth and that helps a lot with abrasion. And as a comparison, while clean classic ropes survive up to 200 cycles, clean dry treated ropes would survive up to 600 cycles of this test. So now what? It's a treated one. And now first do the mark. So I think you put the last one, huh? So you do exactly the same mark. No, 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 this no. One. Uh, we have a master for that. Master. Master of scientist. Mark. Master, master mark. of marking. <laughs> master of science. All right. Highly scientifically marked. Scientifically marked. <laughs> <laughs> did, you can did, continue. Do, do you learn how to scientifically mark in your scientific university yes i studied many years marking. to apply the edging on you the have like a course for marking <laughs> yes <laughs> so the same plan half of the rope is dirty and half of the rope is clean and take a look what happens just after the first five cycles you can instantly see the difference at the same time, it was interesting to see if dry rope will perform better than classic. So we decided to match the previous experiment and run this rope until 50 cycles. Science. Then apply the dirt and run until 65 cycles. Whoa. 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 Oh, it's painful. The voice, uh, sound is just the like... The sound is ah. grinding on the edge. <laughs> it could be torture for someone, you know? And here is the comparison between clean and dirty segments. As you can see, ropes really don't like dirt. And now if we would compare dry treated ropes with classic ropes, you can see that dry treated rope performed significantly better. All right, so we saw the effect of dirt on the ropes and it's massive. Now the question is, does washing them help? So to make this experiment as realistic as possible, I took my old rope, cut it in half and washed half of it. So the rope is clean now and it looks almost like brand new. And I think the reason is because this rope is dry treated so the dirt doesn't get inside the rope as much. And now after just a single wash, it really looks like new again. So that's why we decided to also do a non-dry treated rope. So we found a non-dry rope and that's a Hannes rope. A dirty one. It's a dirty Look rope. Look at this dust. Holy macaroni. <sighs> I hoovered just before you came. I came, I made mess and I cut your ropes. And then you leave. Good, good friend, no? Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever wash this rope? No. Do you ever wash your ropes? I never washed any rope. Okay. Close. Yay. Okay. So now you have two ropes. I have 
Yeah, good! <laughs> <laughs> so we have samples of the same rope, which is washed and not washed. One note here that this is the same rope, although it looks slightly different. This is because it's a dual pattern rope, which means that instead of middle marker, it has a different patterns on different sides. I selected them from the middle of the rope to be more even or more similar. And then we have the same scenario with a classic or not treated rope, one washed and one not washed. And this time we are not gonna apply any extra dirt. And I'm curious to see if that's gonna show a difference. Yeah, I have no idea if this washing helps. <laughs> I think it does. You think, we'll, yeah. it, you think we will see the difference? Yes, but hey, let's try it. So we started with the dirty rope and the plan was to run this rope until we can see the core. As a reminder, if this rope would be clean and new, it would last up to 600 cycles. This time, since we were not reapplying any extra dirt, the rope was lasting much longer, but after 185 cycles, we got to the core. Yeah, the core is clearly visible. Okay, okay. Okay, so 185. It's already roll. Let's try the washed one. Let's do this. Okay, so do you expect this to last longer? Yes, it will. <laughs> it will? Yes. So a climber just repelled 185 pitches. <laughs> just in case you need to repel 185 pitches. Against a sharp edge. Against a sharp edge, yeah, that's important. Good morning, ready? Hi, yes, always. <laughs> All right, we have two ropes. Tell me which one is worse. Well, I would say this one looks even more fluffy, but both are quite fluffed up, but I would say this one. And here is the results. And the result is that the difference between washed and the clean rope is actually minimal. Maybe the washed rope performed slightly better. But there is always a but. Normally outside when you climb, your rope gets in contact with dirt many, many, many times. So if we would have applied dirt many, many times, probably the difference would have been much greater. And now the final experiment where we compared old classic ropes. You can even see the difference in color. So let's see if there is difference in abrasion resistance. Oh, <laughs> that was really bad. So we ripped the dirty one very spectacularly in 125 cycles. And now we're gonna try the washed piece. And then Magnus is gonna be cheering for the washing machine again. <laughs> <laughs> I like clean stuff. Me too, I'm cheering as well. 110. Okay, so we have to do 15 more yeah. to uh, prove that washing the rope makes sense. <laughs> now we are going for the moment of truth. 115. Shall we stop? Or I uh, know, uh, one 125. more. 125. Right? Okay. We need 10 more. Oh my god, the suspense is killing me. <laughs> 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 okay, let's see what we've got here. If you wouldn't look into the ripped part, would you see the difference? Here yes. to here, yes. Yes, you do. It's a big difference. And this time, as you can see, the difference was much bigger. 
Hannah did a good job washing her robe and it would have lasted her much longer if you didn't cut it up. <laughs> you know what I'm thinking now? When we climb, we always chalk and touch the ends of the rope a lot. Maybe that excessive chalk on ends of the rope is one of the reasons why we get the ends of the rope so quickly worn out. Because mm -hmm. although we tested only the dirt, Mammoth engineers already tested with the chalk before I came and they sent me pictures and the chalk had all also an impact. Maybe not as bad as the dirt? Oh, no, it was equally bad. It was equally should, should bad? Get them? Yeah, I you should them. get them. Ones, huh? So we have the dry rope. Okay, I haven't yes. seen this one yet. So this side... This is, is treated? Yes, dry rope, and this part is chalked. And this Whoa, is that's a huge difference. So this really explains why the rope ends are damaged so fast. I mean, yes, obviously you always fall into the same meters, yeah. but especially touching it with chalk and maybe like letting it drop into the dirt. Yeah, I used to always like chalk up and then do the partner check and then grab the rope and check everything. And then now I switch, so like do the partner check first and then I chalk up and start climbing. The dirt and the chalk, just, just keep it away from the rope as much as possible. A lot of people actually worry that washing might damage the rope. Can we kill this worry somehow? Yeah, what water does to the rope? The dynamic ropes are made out of polyamide 6. This polymer is very prone to absorb water. So this means that the water changes the molecular structure of the material, which leads to a significant change in mechanical properties. I mean, if it's just for washing and afterwards you dry it, the water disappears again. But Does the you... structure come back once the water disappears? Yes, but if you climb on it, then the structure is modified and it has an effect on the faults and on the entire behavior of the rope. So basically at the moment when it's wet, it's a bit modified and if you climb on it, it might damage it. Okay. However, if it dries, that's okay then. Then it kind of com comes back to what it was. Exactly. You put it in your bathtub for washing and then you put it out to dry and it does not experience any mechanical stress in the meantime. It's fine. You know, wash it properly, meaning wool program 30 degrees, use a mild detergent. And yeah, this is always people like, what is a mild detergent? Yeah, well, <laughs> You just go to your supermarket and if you have like detergents there which says, yeah, brings back the colors into your <laughs> washing and stuff, hey, don't take that one, huh? And it's... Whitening, yeah. no. <laughs> so no whitening and no brings back the colors. Yeah. <laughs> but in our experiments, we washed without any detergents and it was still much better, so... And then just drying, not on the heater at home. Very important. <laughs> Do not hang it over your heater to dry. <laughs> ah, like over the radiator at yeah. home yeah, or yeah, something exactly. like that. <laughs> okay, so thank you for inviting me. I go wash my robes. <laughs> <Yeah>. Enjoy! <laughs> and before you go, there was one more thing that I was super interested in. Since Mammoth engineers mentioned that loading a wet rope is not good for the rope, I was curious what would happen if you would have a hard fall in the rain when your rope is completely soaked. Would that be a harder catch than normal? And also, would that damage your rope? And actually, my friend Ryan already did a similar experiment on his drop tower. However, he did not find a difference between wet and not wet ropes. However, I was a little bit suspicious about his setup. And since I was at Mammoth, we had an access to a fancy drop tower and loads of smart people. I asked if we could do this experiment and that one is coming in the next episode. So subscribe. <laughs>